Hi and welcome to my Genetic Rim tutorial. I'm Icon and this video will teach you everything you need to know to be a proud owner of your own Architect Centipede. I will talk about genetic recombinations of animals in the first part of the video. Then I'm going to talk about the other nice features this mod package offers to you. And the third part of the video will be all about the quest for the Architect Centipede and a few tips and tricks alongside if you want to go for that ordeal yourself. So first up, to go down the road of genetic engineering, you will need, of course, technology. I would strongly recommend you to first up create a solid backbone of a base before you start with anything of these because this is all at least mid-game tech. You'll need a lot of steel, a lot of power and not, last but not least refrigeration power and materials to actually create animals from. So that's up front. But to create monsters right away you only need two things. You need the genetic engineering technology and then you will you're actually already able to do whatever you consider a good thing. These here are your prerequisites for add-ons. I run add-ons for dinosaurs and megafauna and alpha animals. These are extra add-ons for the Genetic Rim mod. You find everything you'll need in the link in the description below mod-wise. So after you have researched genetic engineering, you are able to create your first hybrids. So down here, we see a complete genetic laboratory, which has all the things you might want to have. But everything starts out with just two things, a genetic extraction table. That's the first thing you might want to have and a pulper. This is the basic equipment. At the genetic extraction table, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. We extract genes from there. You see here what kind of genes you can extract. If you're insecure about what is a bird, you can check out the recipe and you see what is good as a bird or what counts as a bird. So. Then the other thing, the pulper creates organic pulp from wood or, yeah, from wood. You can kind of do any other things here. So organic pulp is a really, really important material for all the genetics because you always create new monsters and new materials and all that stuff. A site component is basically always organic pulp. So once you got to, to these uh, these two things running, you will also need a empty incubator. They look like this. And then last but not least, you will also need the gene pod. The gene pod is the third thing you will need to create creatures. Here I run the advanced gene pod, which is just the same as a normal gene pod, but better. And here you get to choose what kind of monster you want to breed. So you see here all the op all the options we got to combine bears. So you need a incubator, bear genetic material and boomalope genetic material. The game gives you a plenitude of options. Really seriously, it's a lot. But there are two things to know. First up, you will need to research more if you want to tinker around with insectoids, reptilians and humans. Well, no, and the humans are a completely different topic. Let's skip that for now. Insectoids and reptilians. Later down the road, we also learn to use, where was it again? Advanced genetic engineering, which unlocks combinations with thrombos. And after that comes mechanoid biointegration, which even allows combinations with mechanoids. And that's a really, really big pool to choose from. I don't want to spoiler too much here, just tell one or two things. First up, every of these combinators has at least two options what can come out of it, at least the vanilla ones. If you're running these extra here alpha gene pod megafauna gene pod and so on these often only have one possible outcome but here there's always one version where either this or that genome is dominant so with a bear boomalope hybrid you'd have either a vari variant where the bear is dominant or the boomalope so if you want to breed that stuff you'll need a lot of uh, a lot of genes but that's just the process. You extract the genes here and you have to 
keep them cool or they will spoil. Then you create some pulp and an incubator and then you combine that all together at the gene pod with Bill and then you wait a while. I think it's two days. Keep an eye out to store your incubators where they are well climatized because they can spoil as well. And yeah, that's that. Congratulations. Now you know how to create monsters in this mod. But there's more to that. First up, I want to talk about the more advanced monsters or another option of monsters you want to go you can go for and that's paragon animals. Paragon animals are like a special breed, a, a purified and enhanced breed of a certain animal. That's how the idea of the mod maker at least uh, goes. And with animal enrichment you can create... wait a sec... stabilizing serum... no that's not what we're looking for. Here, Paragon serum extraction table is this here. So at the Paragon serum extraction table you can extract these serums and as you see here it's very specific. It's very, very, very specific in this particular case. You really can't put anything else than that into the recipe. Every time you got two of those serums, you can combine them together at the Animal Enrichment Center. And there you can output those Paragon animals. Paragon animals are pretty cool and pretty hard to come by. But... That's how you do them. That's basically yet another form of hybridized animals. So that's what you need to know about this topic. There are not much more options. Only one thing, if you want to go for mechanoid combos, you will need a certain item which comes with the elf with the genetic rim mod, and that's the mechanoid interface chip. You'll need one of those to actually create a hybrid out of mechanoids. And as you see here, mechanoid interface chips cost a ton of materials. So if you ever loot those from your enemies, sometimes mechanoids drop these, keep them. You can really do marvelous things. Don't waste them away. All right, and now you know all that's to know about combi combi combining animals. The stronger the the base grade of the animal, like if we combine thrombos with, with a rat, that's less effective than combining a thrombo with a bear. But combining a bear with a rat is still weaker than combining a thrombo with a rat. So it's really not that easy to figure it out, but the base rule here is this is everything you can do with those is the weakest tier everything you can do with those is tier two which is quite okay combat strength wise and everything out of these here is insanely strong if you use those extra mod modded packs i can only say most of them are stronger than the non add-on thingies all right, so that's the end of part one. Part two will be now about, about the extras and implants and stuff Genetic Rim has in store for us, which is really cool. So I want to start out right away with something which fits into the topic of animal breeding and hybrids as well. That's the age pills. Age drugs are awesome. You can administer these to give to, to age your animals by just one year. They are made out of herbal medicine and psychoid leaves and they are basically, for me, the ammunition to create an army of massive monsters in no time. Because this way you can just skip the growing process of your animals and if you're overall into farming, age pills are really really awesome. Also it makes up for a creative way of punishing unruly colonists because you can also administer these to humans. But the next thing is, is completely something else, that's the Animal Control Center. Once you build this, your animals are basically draftable. And you can mind control the creature and then you can send it around. Just keep in mind to uncontrol them at some point. All animals have some special skills, that goes for all the stuff here in Genetic Rim. I just didn't want to spoil you too much. So with this one you can take more control over your animals. I really enjoyed that and I consider it almost a, well, 
a prerequisite for the late game of Genetic Grim. Keep in mind though that you are not able to mind control non-genetically engineered creatures. This only works on your own creations. So, what comes after this is the gene, gene duplication. I want to talk about that before we dive into the topic of implants. Gene duplication is one of another very very important keystone text for this mod because with the gene duplicator as the name implies you're able to duplicate genes. This is awesome. Once you have this technology and a base stock of genes, you will basically never ever run out of genes anymore. Here I configured it in a way that they will always create a stockpile of three in advance. Just keep in mind, you won't be able to gene mechanoids, uh, to clone mechanoid genes or thrombogenes. That's out of the question. Thrombogenes are basically the the most precious genes out there. Mechanoid active components, that's how the genes there are called, are way easier to acquire and most of the time you will less, will have, have not enough chips and way more active components. So that's just that. All right. Apart from that, let's see, yeah, let's talk about the gene trainer repurposing for a second here. This is a funky piece of tech where you can reconfigure gene, tra um, gene trainers, that's not the right word. You can reconfigure Helamexerums and Resurrectomexerums to create hybrid genes that like here, in case of the bear, you get the bear's resilience if you implant yourself these. Everybody can only have one of those gene therapies on himself. Pretty cool stuff. I also want to talk about the gene recombinator. I kind of forgot him. He's with the genetic engineering topic as well. You can here just shuffle genes together and gamble basically with them. It also works for paragon serums. And this is pretty cool because you can really, really help yourself in gaining paragon serums that you want to have, which are not native from animals which are not native to your biome. Because as you see here, there's a lot of animals I never see here ever, like iguanas, for example, or emus. Never see you'll never see an emu in the temperate forest. So, okay, now that that's been covered, let's talk about the implantology. So Genetic Rim allows you to do several sorts of implants. First up we can do humanoid implants which give humans bare claws or bare muscle tissues or even some really nasty things like ovipositors. What makes your people lay eggs? Yeah, it's, it's really not. And you'll work with these things at the tissue growing that. So the tissue growing that features the animal implants, I'm going to talk about that in a sec, as well as the human implants. So a human imp human implant, uh, well, needs a base grid, it comes in three tiers, and always two sorts of genes, like you see ovipositor is being made out of humanoid genetic material and chicken genetic material. These human implants all have humanoid genetic material as a baseline uh, prerequisite. And then, well, go crazy, choose whatever you like. You can do really, 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 really weird things there. But also you're able to do that same wonderful stuff with your animals. And that's being done with the hybrid implantology tech. So I really like it for the fact that you're able to hybrid um, cy cyber, well, to give your animals even new limbs and new, it's really crazy. Go crazy if you want, if you're a player like that. I haven't fully experimented around with these features either, but well, they are just basically implants. We all know how to use them, I guess. So these wire meshes come in three qualities. First one needs steel. Steel plus steel and components, and the last one is pretty nasty, featuring a lot of prerequisites. But you know, if you want to have a mechanoid tail, you have to go through some costs. All right. So after that's been all talked about, let's see. Did I forget something here? Thrombo horn, thrombo skin, really cool stuff. Hybrid thrombo genes, gene trainer. That's the one we've seen there. 
just want to check that I didn't forget anything. Okay, so this sums up part two of this tutorial. Now, these are all the extra features this mod offers, and I think most of it is pretty self-explanatory. It's just a big amount of lecture to do. All right, part three begins, and that's the Architect Project. The Architect Project is basically your end game for Genetic Grimm. It follows the same rules as building a spaceship or the new royalty end game. You will build something, and then you'll start up that 15-day windup, and then enemies come to attack you, and yeah, you'll have to defend yourself until the 15 days period of time is over. So first up, we have to research, of course, all these things. We are used to that. It's uh, just a big chunk of tech points. And after that, you, we will get to build this wonderful piece of structure. So we will need, first up, the mechanoid tinkering table. That's the basic construction platform. What's common for all these things is you'll need steel, plus steel, components, advanced components, gold, and uranium in pretty large amounts. But that's only the things everybody would expect from the late game. What is a little bit less to be expected is, let's see, first up here, the Master Architect database will require you to bring a Persona core. Yeah, that's the same like for the spaceship, but also two mechanoid interface chips. So if you happen to, to loot those, keep two back in your stash if you want to go for a mechanoid for, for the end of this one, because you will need them. Then what also might be a little bit of a hassle is the turbocharged cryo-stabilized engine. You'll need three of them and you'll need cryofuel for that. The cryofuel is only acquired from a combination between boomalope and rodent. So you'll have to go for the... Where was it? No, it was the Boomfalo. Sorry, not Rodent. Boomalo, Boomalo, Muffalo combo. There are two combos to be acquired, and I, if I remember correctly, it was called the Boomfalo, which <coughs> provided the cryofuel. You'll need 300 units of that, and then you're good to go. So maybe you will get lucky and find something out of a caravan if you want to avoid crafting it yourself, but that's another prerequisite, which is not that obvious after all. And last but not least, you will also need the centralized genetic repository. And these are, as you see here, a pretty, these feature a pretty long list. This is one gene of every, of every type and every sort in the game, including Thrumbo. You'll need five of those repositories, so you'll need five of each genomes at least once. Whereas all these things are easily acquirable by cloning them, the mechanoid part, you need to loot them, but honestly, until I was here, I had no issue finding five mechanoids to disassemble. But the thrombos, oh the thrombos. Well, in my case, in this playthrough here I had the issue that no thrombos were coming at all and I want to mention here the gene recombinator was my rescue because the gene re recombinator also gives you the opportunity to shuffle a thrombo gene so it takes five genes of any sort you also can extract directly non-specialized genes out of pretty much everything here there's the non-specialized gene from any animal and you take five of them and can re-roll them and you can basically put everything in there i've i've, I've churned inf whole infestations and the map several times into the recombinator until i finally found the thrombo genes i needed not a single thrombo has crossed the map ever since i started that architect project so uh, apart from that it's just the obvious things you would expect like I mentioned, steel plus steel, components, advanced components, uranium, gold. Nothing too special. The last thing I didn't really mention yet, which is possibly worth mentioning, if you want to go a uh, down the road a lot with gene with the genetic rim mod, you should 
live somewhere where you can at least acquire wood or install some mod to acquire wood because pulp is otherwise a pretty nasty thing to acquire. But you luckily can also use the recycler which can transform corpses and other things into pulp. So if you are in a, in a biome which doesn't feature wood, the recycler is your friend. So I'd say that's the last big tip I wanted to say to give you guys before we let the Architect Centipede talk a little bit. So you see here, the Architect Centipede is a wonderful little pet and it is just fine to use it. So you can, well, let's see, I can't really, adapt. if that's a problem with mind controlling, you can't directly order people to attack, but you can use your orbital power beam. That's no problem. So I'll leave you with this impression about the Architect Centipede and I hope you will be a proud owner of one one day your own. And I thank you so much for your time and I hope you were enjoying yourself. If there are any questions, drop them down below. If there's anything you feel like I forgot mentioning about the mod, sure, feel free to talk about it. And yeah, I'd be happy if we had some good communication here. And apart from that, of course, leave a like on that video if you found it helpful. Leave a subscribe on my channel. Ideally, if you really want to help me out, I'd be super delighted. But if you like sandbox gaming and all that stuff, also you might want to check out my channel. There's a lot of stuff going on, not only RimWorld, but daily RimWorld. All right, friends. So have a nice time and keep cloning. See you then. Bye-bye.